Shalom. Good evening. Good evening from Perth, Australia. Good afternoon from Israel. It's morning in USA. And if you are joining us today um, with your morning coffee, we are very excited to be here. I yes. have met Dr. Aurora um, before. Um, Dr. Talia Steed introduced her to me when she was on my show with we were with Dan Buglio and Talia, and then Talia, Talia was with me alone. She's um, mm -hmm. a doctor in Australia who's working with um, natural medicine and um, autoimmune symptoms. And then she introduced me to you because tell tell me how that happened because she went to you because this is this is a good way to draw on the topic. Tell me how you met Talia and then how we met. She read some of the therapeutic narratives we use uh, as part of our tea uh, treatments and uh, capsule therapies, and they draw uh, her. What's capsule? Capsule? Capsules? Like? Yeah. Uh, yep. Yep. So we have the tea, and there's a capsule version of oh, each of the. Tea. Like take a like take a, a yeah. supplement. Yeah. Yeah. The another version. So they come like this. Great. Great. So it, it, just, just a good question: Is drinking it, or taking it that way, or putting it on your skin, is any way more effective to get the herb? The capsules are stronger because you have a more concentrated dose. Mm -hmm. But any version of usually in therapy, we give them both versions. The patients will take the capsule version and the tea because it's a ideally a held or immersive experience where we give them multiple options, access points to acknowledge and to be with the issue that they're right. looking right. to get help processing. So um, right. usually. So, met, so, so Talia, Dr. Talia Steed came to you for some tea to help yeah. her IBS. I think it was her IBS. Yeah, sure. She called me and said, we have to go on a show with Aurora. So lovely. And I and I was like, well, Chinese medicine. And then what attracted me to you was your interest in the vagus nerve. Oh yeah. That's just like, okay, this woman understands really, because what you know, and what drew you, like what made you interested in the vagus nerve? Because not all naturopaths, naturopathic no. doctors are moving towards the more brain way that we deal with pain and disease. Mm. So Let's talk a little bit about that in your in your career. Yeah, I really think the vagal nerve theory is such an important and valuable aspect to incorporate into all natural medicine philosophy because that is how we work. The tradition of uh, European uh, Western herbalism is littered with traditional uses that people found. So the traditional use is what women particularly found it helpful for. And many of them have a traditional use like um, lemon balm is for heartbreak and um, bergamo for shock and trauma. And when you overlay that with the polyvagal theory and I looked for the actions of the constituents within those plants, they do tone the polyvagal nerve to the areas that the traditional you speak of. So using so, these herbs will help my vagus, will activate my vagus yeah. nerve to calm down my... That's it. Okay. Heart. Yeah, so in the, it's this lovely way in which I think I want to and I use it all the time, that human insight and science should be married or, or met together and the polyvagal theory for um, so much of the actions of natural therapies really uh, supports it, expresses it, demonstrates what it is that we've been doing for thousands of years. You have the two ways in which plants work. They act on the endocrine system, so they provide building blocks for hormones, plant sterols, support, and then um, we had all these traditional uses that were harder to quantify. How do you treat heartbreak? How do you treat grief and loss? When, if you look at the polyvagal theory and if uh, the research I did shows their constituents act on the organ that we know is impacted. So it's so such what an... Do you mean, like if I'm grieving, there's... Yes. 
there's there's say talk more about if I'm grieving or I'm feeling sad, certain yeah. organs are being affected. The hormone, the yeah. organs of hormone are hormonal, which are the adrenal gland. Yeah. Talk more. yeah, yeah, that's right. So this is also really helpful when you use a TCM understanding. So the lungs are the seat of grief in Chinese medicine, and wow. There's lots of studies around asthma having a inherent grief response. When there is grieving people crying, the changing to the lungs and the lung pattern of movement, you know, is, is really something that's as humans consistent. You know, people feel an ache in their chest or they feel that uh, loss as like an depth that's now present within the body. This is the lungs. And the, so the lung uh, response is that the blood supply drops and people so stop breathing. We stop breathing. That's right. Breathing. Yeah. So mm -hmm. lung herbs in Chinese medicine are treated for grief. And then when I look to the Western plant, it's the same that there are many of the mm, plants had a history of usage in grief and loss. And um, I think it's just so valuable to remind ourselves that uh, human experience is the same through centuries and across countries and uh, none of us are different in our responses. And there are plants wherever we are that also can be helpful because human experience is the same everywhere but we can't just go in our backyard and pick them anymore we either have to grow them <laughs> or the and buy them or spend a lot of money on iherb and take them you know well, and then the teas the teas was an incredible uh, i was so happy to hear about your tea company and i know that teas remember celestial seasonings where i grew up and that was the yeah, first yeah. one and the little notes on the you know, and then, so oh, we nice. know about, look, let, let's, as you were talking about the history, we yeah. know that if we were grieving or sad or nervous, I would have a drink of liquor. I That's would have true. a drink of wine. So it's also, yeah. we're going back to food being our medicine. Yes. Certain foods being our medicine. So, and in mm -hmm. the liquor is herbs that Very calm cool. me, relax yeah. me. So we're yes. getting back to the vagus nerve again. That's right. Or the um, alcohol being a depressant, it slows further some of those panicky responses. But, of course, the consequences are not good. Even uh, cigarette smoking, the breathing in and out, you can see how people have located or found something to help them, but the consequences, of course, are very negative. So... Uh, we should be trying to dig back into uh, the history that we have, that um, plants can be consumed, they can be helpful, they don't have to have negative consequences. So here's, here's an example. You know, I have a, a client who is this brave, incredibly courageous uh, woman, mm -hmm. and um, she's dealing with headaches, and um, she understands this work. Yeah. And she'll get some anxiety and want and try to breathe and the anxiety doesn't go away so she might take an antidepressant a small you know and that relaxes her so mm -hmm. we talk about and then she feels guilty for taking i'm like no this is no. like the fact is you want to become your own anti-panic medicine yes. and we're yeah. learning that we can activate that through our vagus nerve Yes. And breathing is one way to activate it. So part of it is, so you sure. breathe because you feel anxious, and then you're like, I want to feel better. <laughs> Same thing. I, I I I feel anxious, and I go and I and I and I I take some tea. Yes. Or I take a cigarette. So I. But we have to understand it doesn't always work so quickly, and that sure. the the fear of the panic is what's causing the cycle. Yeah, that's right. So it's, I think that what people use for symptoms you know, can be acceptable in all forms, but it's, it is that making room for what is going on underneath, that the fear of the fear or the fear of the 
panic. anxiety yeah is what we should be addressing right. and you know making more space for that for that person the decisions that they make around how they treat it is we should be drawing them back to the fact that there's there's a panic it's not they don't have to do the breathing because there's a panic about the breathing so we have to try to help them to get back mm -hmm. to making space for that there's a fear i mean and the power of the placebo you know whether it's the breath or a tea or the cigarette or you know or an herb yeah. you know that i smell this you know it's like if i had a belief enough in my in 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 the ability for me to meet the panic yeah. like hello yes. panic i'm now in the lion's den with you even though you're a toy lion you're not yeah. real you're not a real threat but i'm feeling right now that you are a real threat so i'm meeting you and i yeah. want to believe that i when i do meet you that you can i'm going to see that you're a toy lion it's like it's, <laughs> it's like it's like we get to the place of like oh, and then and so part of it i always say on the other side of the panic is your freedom yes that's right so yeah we have so so if we if we were drinking so the tea could be another aspect or you know yeah. having like i call it a toolbox like put the, yes. have the tea have your journaling have the breath have a pill like this person could take you know um uh, uh saint john's wort or one of the pills that you created because that's these are all these strong herbs that are helping yeah. us calm that's what's in nicotine it's what's in marijuana you know that's it's right. so i partly it's the relationship with the yeah so, let's, so when you when you counsel your clients do you you help them with a relationship with how they take the tea and how they take the herb and how they they might smell the the essential oils you know yes. to help calm that's right yep through all systems you know that it's essential that we try to give an immersive level of support and that we make space for any responses that happen um, you know the fear and panic our fear formula is called fear and freedom because we think that the fears are limiting of people and that if we can assist them in just getting some space from them there is such freedom waiting uh, yeah, for that's them. beautiful it's such a big thing with the chronic pain world yes uh, aurora with the fear and dr schubiner some of us we all know him he's one of my mentors and teachers and he's mm -hmm. always talking about how the fear is so much bigger yes and we've given the fear this power yeah. to imprison us so the fear and freedom formula <laughs> you have yeah. is is lovely and so true you know can you talk more about your like did you yourself have trauma and then decided to do this or you were just drawn yeah. some kind of angel said you're going to be my warrior angel to labor over <laughs> herbs and teas and garden and make things and help many people can you talk a little bit about how you got into this and what drew you to this amazing work that you're doing I, I have had my own experiences of trauma and I, I grew up in a hard environment, but it was an environment in which we were taught that everyone is equal. And the longer that I live, the stranger a statement it seems, but, but we were told as children that everyone is of equal value, everyone deserves equal care and no one should stop another person from accessing the care that they need. And so, you know, the uh, harshity of that background had some really good things in it that um, there were several life traumas. I was um, out of home at 16 and I uh, had to support myself. And there were, you know, um, of course, like lots of, uh, young people, many uh, situations that were not safe and finding a way through those things. Um, there were so many more things that happened. Um, 
that they just built up to the point to where I had an experience of um, chronic PTSD and through that changes because it, it changes how your brain works. And so in coming through that, because in that horrible experience when nothing seems believable, the, the, the sky could be purple and the grass could be orange because if this horrendous thing has happened to you, then why does anything still continue to be the same? How can you lose uh, so much of yourself and so much that you loved and still the world continues? It doesn't make any sense. And so the trauma changes of those just made it more possible to decide that really what happens to people is important and because I could still hold that everyone was equal and everyone needed care then there had to be a way that I could find uh, to be that help so why not find that plants that we're told deal with fear they actually do that their constituents will tone the polyvagal nerve what why not so taking these, er these healthy herbs for your yeah nervous system will tone the actual nerve will actually yeah make it strong the nerve i love that you know when people can't do it for themselves you know isn't that the the thing that the panic is there the fear is there they're real responses the body cannot be wrong she can be reactive though you know and you can't say to someone trust your insight trust your knowing when actually their knowing is their polyvagal nerve and she is reactive. She, she can't tell them anymore. She's busy being afraid. The vagal so, nerve, yeah, the, are you saying the vagal nerve is a she or the, she, the person? Yeah. In, yeah. We live in, we live <laughs> yeah, in, a in Hebrew. We, we, the, there's a gender like in French and like in yes. French and I think Spanish too, there's gender. So there's yeah. the words are either him or he so it's so interesting so the so the vague so you're giving the vagal nerve an identity and this is this yes. is where we have we can have a healthy relationship with our nervous That's, system yes and you know what they call the vagal nerve in latin it's called the wanderer yeah that fascinating yes. so let's it's talk more cool. i i just i feel like i wish i had access so i wish i had easy access to your teas and to your herbs and I I wish you could just like plant a garden in everybody's yes. apartment and grow these and they just grew like tomorrow and people could just like and we could do the law of attraction this will this will help my pain this will help my headache like i want to i want to i want to be merlin the magician with you and do that but so some of you some of them are near you you know some of them are wild to your area and i think that's you know the the lovely thing there is and has always been help often growing at people's feet the, the native plants of your area some of saffron is is native this is for uh, ptsd we we use it all the time wow. jasmine you know you have variants of the crocus family you you have already um tell this me more rose. tell me more and how about um Tell me about the valerian root, which we all think is the answer, valerian root, or what's St. John's wort is an herb, and and then we'll St. talk John's a little bit about, about marijuana, but talk about the herbs that you can, like literally a person could go get a plant and grow it yeah. and then could dry it and make tea. They could, yeah. Simple jasmine grows well in your area. Rosemary is used for actually for anger and for frustration because the really you know the pungent smell of rosemary is high essential oils the menthol so what rosemary what is everywhere oh, yeah it's everywhere you walk and i can pick it in any garden yes. anybody's it's everywhere That's in cool. israel rosemary it's actually very good for arthritis too i'm told yeah and anger frustration because of the the volatile oil so all hormones are fats and so much of emotion is fat, you know, so those smells that you can get from the rosemary, like uh, lavender is also high essential. And lavender is a 
pure source of dopamine. So you've got rosemary growing for the, well, I can imagine the anger and the frustration and the built up feeling. You need help to process what is happening. Everything you think and feel is a chemical hormone neurotransmitter. They've got to get in and out of the body. Can expect that people could be feeling nauseous, um, their digestive systems, how do they possibly make sense of what is happening around them? And you can give them agents that help to break it down because we are designed to digest anything that happens to us. Our emotional processing, our responses, we're designed to survive these things and wow. there is help. Uh, to just do that for, just for the record i don't want to forget because i'm working with a couple of women who are dealing with headaches and dizziness which seem to go together and it comes from the neck and the tension and the tightness and the blood and oxygen being taken from the sympathetic nervous system and protection and i all you know besides stretching your neck and breathing yeah. I, and, and and understanding the headache is is a protective mechanism i would love to say that there could possibly be a tea or an oil that yes. would that they could believe could could calm them down and help their brain what would that be for headaches dizziness and upper you no know, motor neuron kind of stuff like that yeah some of the mint families used a lot for headaches yes. any of them really you have a yes, local the menthol, mint. the menthol or the, the, awesome mint. the winter green yeah yep to the green sometimes people apply those things don't they yeah um yeah. uh anything really that released that that occiput you know and so it's is it the tension so uh, lavender from the dopamine sources or you know the real constriction that's there the fear that's happening yeah. and certainly you could use yeah. things like valerian or yeah, you know, the jasmine saffrons have you know trauma based uh stress Lovely. responses there's it. always um Rose hips, you know, the dog rose is native to where you are, but any That's rose. Isn't that a part of vitamin C, a big part of yes. vitamin C? Yeah, healing. because so trauma responses are inflammatory and you set off an out, uh, oxidative cascade, like in pain, the same because fear and pain are both messages that something is wrong. And so when you need something to break those down, because they create... Uh, cortisol uh, production and vitamin C by flavonoids, quercetin found in rose hips uh, will break down those chemicals, those uh, hormonal aspects of response. Wow. So rose Amazing. hips is particularly known for arthritic um, pain. So if some of that, you know, the, the head, the compression to the mm -hmm. structures, mm -hmm. Yeah, had beautiful. become inflammatory. Then, um, so for inflammation, which is the basis yeah. of so much, um, so you know, imbalance in the body, auto, auto, auto yeah. and neurologically, what would you say that someone could do for inflammation besides, you know, ice, which is cooling down the system because it is a hot condition? But would somebody yeah. be able to to take some kind of herbs and drink some kind of specialty what were the same ones you just mentioned for inflammation yeah you those ones i was looking at because of their locality to you because i think that it's really important that people are um, understanding that there's help around them you know things that are easy for them to access and to get a hold of um, there are some much more specific plants for pain, and we can look at um, the Helichrysum family. So we have a uh, life everlasting in our pain tea that we use, and it's this lovely yellow flower, like Tum sunflowers. Turmeric? Turmeric? Yes, turmeric acts in a different way. It is anti-inflammatory, absolutely. And any of the bright colours that you see in plants are because of their mm, oh. polyphenols. So they will often have a anti-inflammatory quality because that's sweet potatoes and galangal and orange things. Um, the sunflowers 
are in that uh, helichrysum family the same as, and they all are plant cabinoids, so they're right. different. Um, right. so, let's, so let's finish, finish talking about the inflammation and then let's move on to yes. the cannabinoids, which I did want to talk about. I know. You know marijuana or cannabis let's call it cannabis because i think that that helps people understand that's the plant name cannabis yeah yeah cannabis <laughs> the anti-inflammatory herbs so we use uh white willow we use um fever few is quite readily available also the helichrysum of course rose hips because often there's joint and you can use st john's wort for nerve pain though its specific use is for anxiety in um, peri- and postmenopausal women. So it has a specific area of use, whereas we have lots of nervines for different life experiences and different life stages. Wow. So t tell me about your experience and how you feel about cannabis, because it's it has so many wonderful qualities and it's helping so many yeah. people. And yet there yeah. is a uh, a dark side to it. If you can just talk about the light and the dark side. <laughs> I, I think we've really seen a phenomenal growth in its use around the world. And it's really helpful to have non-drug-based pain relief for people. And I, I really value it for that. I think we should all have concerns around the exposure that people might have to THC. So uh, I don't know how it is for you. In this country, we have medical cannabis, which is prescribed and, uh, and its extracts are taken to minimize its content of THC. And it is the THC that gives people the psychoactive or the mental high that, that they associate commonly with street use of marijuana. Yeah, and it's and that in itself can relax people. But I have clients who had to get off it in order yeah. for them to face themselves because it can take yes. you away. It can be that like antidepressant that That's takes right. you away further. So yep. temporarily you may, but you're not dealing with the cause, which is the relationship mm -hmm. inside. So, um. So it is something like the nicotine. It is something like so the THC yes. and the marijuana or the cannabis is the part that can help us temporarily, but has side effects besides yeah. disconnecting you from your from your feelings, which is where the healing comes. There's other yes. side effects for the brain, I think. Yeah, I, I think they're the same thing in that that shutdown that you're describing. So THC particularly is known to sever nerve neuronal connections. So the synapse connections where messages are sent from one neuron to the other. And wow. so it's those breaks that mean that uh, chronic or regular use even of THC containing cannabinoids can induce psychosis. And the other risks now that um, research is showing is a much higher rate of uh, stroke, heart attack, um, versions of heart effects that are very detrimental to people's well-being. So, um, people that are I, currently smoking a lot, or that yes, they smoked and stop, so they're currently smoking. It's yeah. it's hurting their nervous system. It's affecting their yes. synapses. The THC That's and the right. marijuana. Yeah, and that disconnect that they describe is a disconnect from everyone around them. So we are designed to co-regulate. Adults should be able to regulate, but many cannot. But we are able, ideally, to co- and if someone has checked out that you're not regulating anybody, let alone yourself, and they're not regulating themselves, they're just shutting down their nervous system responses. So I understand the need for relief, um, but I would really want to work to hold and find other possibilities for them. That said, you know, medical grade cannabis is that have very little THC have a much broader um, applicable use because they can have less of those harmful effects. And 
That's what we should be exploring. Like I mentioned very briefly, one of our teas has a plant cabinoid in it, the Helichrysum family, which is very broad. Um, sunflowers are everywhere. The and sunflowers they are a family of cannabinoids? Yes. I love they're that. Cannabinoids. And they're, they're so happy. Look at them. Can you smoke <laughs> sunflowers? Can you? You can. <laughs> but there's also Eating. but what's he something's healing in the sunflower what's healing in the yes. sunflower is it the, they, same family they're plant cannabinoids so wow. they have the same anti-inflammatory actions the same anti um anxiety functions wow. um, but they don't have the thc so you know you have a much safer uh, option for people even hemp oil when it doesn't contain thc yeah, what, is hemp? what is, is hemp another plant no no same thing just um usually then you know they're not there's no thc involved so okay so but, hemp is a plant and there's no thc in hemp because they're making hemp for the hair and okay so hemp yeah. is just another name for the cannabinoid plant yeah yeah that's right the okay. Helichrysum family is very broad, though. Life everlasting flowers are um, not far from your region. Sunflowers are everywhere. And I think we should try to emphasize that there can be help everywhere. It's not, and there's no reason why these plants that we know less of can be any less effective than ones that people do know. You know, it, it's a, a misnomer to suggest that plants alone can't help people when marijuana, nicotine, they're all plants. So we just have to switch. True? I'm going to interrupt you from, is it true that all medicines started with plants and herbs? Yeah, a lot of them and um, even more continued to be. So a lot of the psychoactive medicines they're looking at using in psychiatry from fungi, you know, they, you know it's all from plants. Mushrooms. Right. Yes. Aspirin wow. from trees, from birch, you know, so most medicines um, could be said to have a origin within the natural world. So. Wow. Wow. Hmm. No, and we know that for mental health, there's now a whole field of um, yeah. psychedelics. And that's, yes. all, that's all herbs. Yes. Fun yeah. I'm sure that they're making extracts and elements particularly so they can be patented and sold. But the, you know, the original sources and many of them still are from fungi. And although I have concerns around how that is managed for people because, um, you know, the priority should be to hold a patient very well and that's often not done particularly well even by practitioners. So right yeah so interesting so so is there it's funny that there's not not that's funny it's there's in, it's interesting that there's not yet a tea a cannabis tea wouldn't that be like a great seller wouldn't that be should me and you go into business and do and make a cannabis tea <laughs> well apart from the legal problems associated um <laughs> and i like i said i wouldn't advocate cannabis anyway you know the not to the the plant version that has thc because it's a natural normal component should have very limited use you know many of those psychoactive plants were ceremonial they were specific for specific right topics. we're not talking about i mean talk about the indians and talk about the aborigines yeah yeah kava was a ceremonially accessed plant only they're not designed to be everyday crutches for people to shut themselves down with it's not they can be very valuable but Ideally, we would access good support, find ways to be held to look and regulate while looking at that experience, because right. that's right. the best thing that we can do. It's to be processed, not suppressed. Right. So. Processed, not suppressed. Processed, not repressed. Yes, repressed. exactly. Yeah. And that's yeah. why we think pain 
comes about is that there's so much being held in that body right. that um, the messages that something is wrong become so loud that they can't be held in anymore and, and the pain is a response. But yeah. there's so, so much. much so many of the suffering people are because they didn't, you know, the people that go to a doctor and take medication, they get better. Then they stop the medication and they're fine. The people that did not respond to the medication start to believe that they need to find something to fix them. Yes. Not very few doctors are really getting to the cause of anyone's problem. And so we you know, call these medically unexplained symptoms and, you know, TMS and yep. psychophysiological disorders. That's right. Symptoms of, you know, a, a, a greater and it, it, it almost it brings out the worst in the medical community because the medical community is helping people. Yeah. OK, you know, but um, <clears throat> are we helping them help themselves? Is the medical community empowering people to help themselves? The philosophy of orthodoxy doesn't really support the treatment of causes. You know, it, it's about um, the expectation appears to be that people will all get sick and die at some point and the role of the orthodox practitioner is to manage those experiences with as few symptoms as possible and await the inevitable. That's not holism, that there's no, I don't see any structural um, basis where they're beholden to find those causes, their acceptance of everyone gets disease and so we just, we wait. Right. Um, seems consistent. Right. Because the body has the, you know, innate intelligence to heal over and over yeah. and over again. It's striving for healing and it's protective mechanism of causing you the inflammation. It's trying to heal. It's like it wants to get on the other side of that inflammation just like you do. That's it's right. It's waiting for messages yeah. that it can stop protecting you. You know, and to go be it's go be, act like a body, which it does automatically and doesn't really. So it's almost like it's we're back to the relationship again and um, the education. And what I think um, interests me about your work is, you know, and Rose and I would talk about this. We would we brought in a few nutritionists uh, in the beginning of our, our first year. We met this amazing man who was 17 and he was diagnosed with MS and he said, nope, I'm not going to buy into this. And he um, started, he went right to the nutritional aspect of why his uh, nervous system, why his myelin sheath was just destroying itself. Yeah. You know, um, and my, my mother had MS and it's what, kind of project yeah. puts me in a position of wanting to help others because of my upbringing and, and the trauma I experienced and, and watching my mother with MS. And so I understood, you know, MS is like the wire of like a phone. The outside of the wire is the myelin sheath. And yeah, that that's disintegrates nice. and then your yeah. nerves are exposed. So the, what I what I even learned was the myelin sheath is made from B vitamins. Yeah. So I'm thinking even back then, you know, yeah. and so this gentleman, he has a company, he's an organization called MS Hope, Matthew yeah. Embry, um, focused a lot on nutrition. And we had him on twice because he adheres to one of the big um, nutritional programs of helping the nervous system and helping yeah. the immune system. And I am sure it's covering all these herbs that you're talking about in the foods because he, he has a cookbook and everything. So yeah. it's, and people say, well, you know, but I don't know enough about nutrition to be advising people. I'm just find mm -hmm. what works for you. You know, everybody is a little bit different, but they're basic universal laws. And I, I like to say it's the relationship between you and the food, not so much the food. It's more important. Sure. How you, um, and your body. So, um, but for so many of the people that healed that I've been honored to meet over the last almost four years from cancer and arthritis and 
Yes. Yes, and all sorts of autoimmune symptoms and chronic pain. The nutrition was a key. Nutrition, mm -hmm. belief in God, <laughs> the relationship with their thoughts and their nervous system, these were the keys. Yes. That healed. They had to love their body. People, the people with yes. fibromyalgia had to love their fibromyalgia. Like this to me was the key. So we're back to the vagal nerve. We're back to their yes. threat safety. We're back to the relationship. That's right. The nutrition end of it is such an important and it excites me to be to meet to be talking to you because it's such a big piece of what we put in our bodies, what we yeah. think, what we digest emotionally, neurologically, what we digest, what we digest, you know, psychologically and spiritually, what we take in. Take in. So important. And with the, you know, the polyvagal nerve is the gut brain connection. So, you know, the response to the food is a polyvagal response. The reactivity of the gut or the reactivity of the body is a polyvagal response. The inflammation or the message that something is wrong, the pain even is a polyvagal response. So if we can wholesomely parent the body, if you can regulate that body, then potentially you're dealing with and removing the pain and the inflammation. If she can be okay, then she doesn't need to produce any of those responses. Yeah, and you're talking about she as the vagus nerve. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I love that you call her she. You can even, you know, Dr. Schubiner would tell us about a client who used to talk to her brain and journal to her brain. And, you know, yeah. and I always say, to ask my patient clients to give me, send me a picture of you as a child so we can have a relationship oh, yes. with yes. with you, with the child, with the nerve, with the, the thing That's that you it. think is against you. Yes. So talk yeah. a little bit more about the vagus nerve. I just love that work and, and the nutrition for the vagus nerve. So nutrition for the vagus nerve could be the name yeah. of our show. Yeah, I really think that we should look at those things as it's a, a nerve response, you know, and, and we describing a polyvagal nerve as an entity or a thing or a she is because people need space to have that relationship. There's this terrible repressive pain that they're feeling, but the behind it, the reasons for all of that is uh, potentially lovable, or all of that is a normal response. And nutrition to the polyvagal nerve is, is nutrition to what nervous systems need, like the myelin, so the phosphatidyl serines, the phospholipids, all of those things you can look at accessing through food. So uh, we know probiotics improve polyvagal tone, fish oils improve polyvagal tone. So it's, you know, a relationship is two-sided and ideally I try to promote people engaging with that relationship, what their body needs, what their nervous system needs. Those things are very important. Wow, wow. Yeah. How, so, in, in, in summary, how can people know themselves, Aurora, Dr. Aurora? That's such a beautiful name, Aurora. It's a name of it's like a galaxy or something. It's a beautiful name. So, Dr. Aurora, what, what, how can people know themselves and know what they need? T tell us how to get to that place, first of all. It's tricky, isn't it? Because... You know, we always want to encourage um, patients to go with how they are feeling. We want to try to encourage them to, to use and connect to their inner knowing. The problems, I think, people in fear or highly reactive states find is that, that what they're hearing is reaction. So we have to really do work around uh, grounding and we have to really do work around accepting any response as a response, not necessarily as a call to action. It's a response that the body is having. And particularly, I think, in the early stages where people are 
experiencing a high level of response. Uh, we need um, support and guidance to still choose ultimately what are good choices for the body um, because when the body's reactive, she can't be wrong, but she can be reactive, and that needs care and support until she's able to reset. Yeah. Beautiful. So, and if somebody wanted to take an herb or go buy a plant or take a pill and they didn't have access to your store, where would they go? What would they do? How would they fill their medicine cabinet with things that would help them respond? How yeah. could they fill their toolbox? What would you suggest? Yes, certainly I, I think the teas we use are available um, online. From your local store, you could get things like saffron and um, jasmines, often widely available. They're really good at nervous system support and calming and settling just active uh, engagement with nature, grounding the feet on the ground will, you know, that that's the nervous system is electrical. Grounding works because you can reset to the seven hertz vibration of the earth rather than your own, you know, extrapolated, um, slightly crazy vibration you might be having at the time. So it's things that engage with the body and the body senses swimming, walking, you know, grounding, because your body can and wants to reset, whether or not there's pain or fear or panic, she wants to get back to a comfortable state. And it's really that uh, developing of a relationship with the body. So she needs some more swimming, we need a more walking, maybe, you know, we, um, need to do those things until we can get to a point where we're able to um, do deep breathing or um, reset. The plants are always available and I think such helpful tools. Um, we have a tea called Overwhelm. It has motherwort in it. Motherwort is famous for its ability to engender mothering, the mothering comfort, the oxytocin hormone response wow. that we get. What's the pl the plant is called motherwort? It's called motherwort. Oh wow! Yeah. Okay. Um, it's now a fear formula in the overwhelm formula. It, it is something you could purchase online. It it's just looking at ways in which um, we can give people useful, practical, everyday tools. Rose hips um, that they'll find in any store. Uh, rose hips have high vitamin C. The inflammatory cascade that is panic, that is stress, that is trauma, needs a lot of vitamin C and quercetin to break down the inflammation. Wow. So, so there are things, you know, growing at people's feet, mints, and um, you have a native purslane. The things of that uh, are designed to help you are all around. And I think that should be something we Beautiful. speak about. Um, Maybe short of um, Googling, you know, herbs that calm, I think that um, maybe you'll send me something and I'll put it on the, yeah. you'll send it to me and I'll put it with your your beautiful store. Thanks. And look, the mail here in Israel isn't so great. We get things from Amazon pretty quickly, but I'm not sure from Australia. Um, though, it's fine. Yeah, yeah, we get um, it too. But anyway, so I'm just thrilled to meet you again and be in your grace and your beauty and your like calmness. It's calmed me down today. And um, so I am not selfless when I do this broadcast. It's also something I can help me because yes. I always say I'm here to help you and help myself because I can't do this yes. without we're just trying to yeah. you know, it's all about co-regulating and that i think that's so valid to see in another that we can together find weight this is co-regulating smell your bergamot essential oil because it's for bravery and traditionally used for shock and trauma mm -hmm. there's help around you and that is mm -hmm. so what we should be yeah. for each other yeah esther i'm so happy esther said hello um 
Shalom. She is a, uh, she was on our show. She's an IFS, Internal Family Systems, but also she's doing art with trauma, yeah. some things. And I wanted, so, when somebody first goes on the Facebook page, yeah. then I can write something. So now I can write something. I can't write. Mm -hmm. So the T was fear and freedom. Yes, that's freedom right. Tea. Um, T, I'm going to say, yeah. Make your own, make your own. I'm gonna come, I'm gonna say with let's say uh lavender. Yeah, so lavender is in a chamomile. We didn't mention chamomile. Oh yeah, that grows everywhere near you. Chamomile, 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 and then um you mentioned a saf saffron. Yep, saffron and jasmine. Um, Rose hips. Rose hips, yes. Rose hips. Yeah. Actual, the fear and freedom tea has jasmine and mother wart and a pellitory. Yeah, really? Actually. Mother, mother yeah. wart. Is that anything yeah. having to do with St. John, John's wart? No, wart is a, a word that means common. So common. often you find it, you know, uh, it's a like a way to say, it's a plant it's a wart yeah. you know that yeah. it was just a, yeah. a speed speed well is in the fear and freedom tea and it also is native to your area what's and it called speed speed well speed well yes because we want you to get better quickly and the sunflower <laughs> the sunflower plant yes so, sunflower. um uh, and you mentioned um the rose hips I mentioned, but also so any vitamin C is good for yes. inflammation. Yeah, for inflammation for the inflammatory responses that come up and that generate high cortisol. It's vitamin C and bioflavonoids that break down that cortisol. For, so for inflammatory mm. responses. Um, yeah. I like we said, which broke would you say would break down well, it's because of those responses you make lots of cortisol, and cortisol yeah, is a stress cortisol. hormone, stress cortisol, adapting. Which cortisol, which which raises the stress level, which increases yes. increases the stress level. So, so if you take, um, so drink, yeah, anything with vitamin C, drink or take. Yes, that's right. Pro tips. To bring it down or take vitamin c i mean I, I like take it and say this is my placebo like it's not even placebo it's working it's actually yeah but yes. like you could also add your because the thoughts are like oh, i'm just doing this because dr toba told me i'm like no you're like this is going to help you that's and then right. i say and if it doesn't it's okay like then like let go sure. of the expectation because part of the drama that happens is uh, we expect to get better right like we have to know that becomes another conflict as opposed to right okay i'm okay with what happens like whatever happens there's a book called whatever arises love that it's yes prophet this amazing gentleman is a prophet he's like one of these like byron katie kind of love loving that like whatever happens yeah. love that because it's yeah. just your thoughts that are hurting you more than the inflammation. And, and that you're giving resources to the body. You know, that's what vitamin C's and the bioflavonoids are for. So maybe she doesn't have enough yet. Maybe that's why there's still the response. Or, yeah. you know, you're, you're trying to meet a need for a child and you might not see the outcome just yet. You have right. to wait for them to grow. The vitamin C's... Um, really good for all types of um, toxic headaches, so frontal headaches. Yeah. And the lowering of cortisol is so helpful in stress. Flavonoids. Flavonoids. I li I've seen that too for headaches. Yeah. yeah. Certain types of toxicity headaches across the forehead, it's really good at. Yeah. And those are dehydrative. The, the lovely thing about um, the notion of cortisol so cortisol is actually the antidote of adrenaline and 
often I see people who are expressing a lot of pain and physiological distress because they're deficient in cortisol, having utilized it over so many years. Right. And if we, cortisol, because it shuts off adrenaline, is actually a hormone that is uh, attempting to make us feel safe. So yeah. when you see someone in clinic who has high cortisol, they'll be really anxious and stressed and noticing that they're very stressed and they will talk about that. When you measure and find someone deficient in cortisol, the stress is normalized and um, what they're actually experiencing is an inward fear because nowhere and nothing is safe anymore. They ran out of effective levels of cortisol. Yeah. Yeah. And so um, when you see someone in autoimmunity, this is the uh, other fascinating connection. So autoimmunity, uh, adrenal is adrenal exhaustion. They've gone through that cascade. They made loads of cortisol, their cortisol crashed, their immune system was suppressed, and then it dysfunctioned into autoimmunity. Mm -hmm. And many autoimmune conditions, people are given cortisone, a drug form of cortisol. So it's this. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> So one of our, I know Ray, she's living in South Carolina in America. What do you feel about tinnitus, doctor? Mm. Um, tinnitus, it depends on the causation. So you have um, subgroups. There's the industrial exposure, so injury because of too much noise. Uh, the groups that have autosclerosis, so these are often women post-pregnancy that have uh, it's mostly, it's, it is some structural stuff with ray but it's mostly yeah. mind body and mostly um you know just she she doesn't like she doesn't want to be with the noise <laughs> so how can how can so part of it is, okay so we'll take the noise down and then i can be with it but sometimes it's like some for some of us it's like i will have to be with the noise for it to go down but how so, can we help the person who's suffering so much i can't imagine having yeah. noise like how can we no, if there was something that could reduce the noise so she could develop a healthier relationship with it in that direction that yeah. would be amazing so maybe a certain tea a certain yeah best to ray i know she's tried certain things that helped temporarily but it's 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 not it's something yeah it's from it came it started from medicine and a tooth being pulled oh no but i would yeah. like to share that you know, Ray's also, her father died from a tooth being pulled. Oh, wow. So yeah. she knows the trauma is connected of to her is. little girl and her, and she knows that, but it hasn't helped her as much as like it could. Yeah, you know. because that's a held response that right. that's, that's right. epigenetic information. We use the trauma formula, particularly also think about the saffron in that trauma formula. The quality of saffron stamens is, is like the auditory nerve, thin and wiry, and um, it's highly antioxidant. The other wow. things with tinnitus is um, it's on the gallbladder channel. And so often you're giving good support if you use um, liver and gallbladder formulas. We have a release and restore formula, but any, because the gallbladder is about um, injustice and frustration and all the yeah. things that get really blocked there. And we would try to hold for a, that, a combination of those things. So the, the trauma plants are to process the trauma. It's a, it's a physiological response that her acknowledging it is helpful, but insufficient on its own. So she needs something to switch off of the right. information-based yeah. response to well, process. I'm going to send her your website and um, our other show that we had. Um, okay. I love it. a wonderful part of our community. And every day I keep her in my prayers. I keep you in my prayers, Ray, that you will come to your healing power and the doctor in you. <laughs> Yes. So I'm, I'm really glad Ray asked. And um, I, if she wants to connect to you, you oh, I'll send her your Facebook page to have yep. a conversation. Because sometimes it could just be as simple as a tea. Sometimes yes. we, I need the, the highest forms. 
And if I just drink this tea every day and just know that it's the doctor and me and my body, like, and just how you describe the gallbladder and the, and the, the herb and the tea is shaped like the gallbladder nerve. And um, anyway, it's really beautiful. And, you know, I know for cancer, there's tons of teas that people drink. There's special teas for cancer. That's right. So I'm all about like the drinking. And from my experience, isn't drinking the fastest way to get to the the blood circulation more than the pill isn't the drinking of the tea better than the smoking or the taking of the pill certainly the warmth of tea like all liquids are better absorbed when they're room temperature or warm um, captures can be more potent because of the amount in the capsule can be more compressed but you know we find both equally helpful to people tea or capsules so great and the um particularly in those cases where there's something uh, so many cases worth acknowledging the therapeutic narratives are a, a held space that they can have uh, to help them yeah, they amazing. That, read the story, they're supported in their process. Amazing. So I am thrilled to meet with you, and I think we'll meet again and talk yes. about <laughs> amazing because herbs and tea are easy, they're not expensive. Yeah. There's something we can drink through the day, they don't hurt. This is a very interesting way to get the toning of the vagus nerve, which I love yes. that. We can talk more about the vagus nerve. Our next show will be the toning of the vagus nerve. Yes, let's do that. So I will not say goodbye. I will just say, yes. see you soon. <laughs> Fabulous. I love it. I thank, thank you. Thank you, just, You're an angel. I'm so happy I met you. I'm thank, grateful to Talia. And um, yes, me too. just uh, we'll meet again soon. And thank you for, for reaching out to me and your blessings. I'm feeling the love. And um, thank you again. Have a wonderful evening. Goodbye, Take everyone. Care. We'll see you soon. This will be on YouTube if you need to see it. And I'll send some information about Dr. Aurora. And we're always here for you at TMS yes. Roundtable. All the best. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye now. Okay. So.